I'm joined now on the phone by a passenger who was on that flight. Elliot Stone is joining us. Uh, Elliot, uh, just walk us through what was going on. You're coming in for a landing after a long flight from Seoul, South Korea. What happened? Yeah, yeah, it was perfect the whole time. We're like 10 seconds away from being home. And uh, it seemed like we're a little bit high. And like we could see the tarmac down below us. And so we're coming down kind of sharp. And then right when it started to coast, like for the landing, all of a sudden the engine was all, like you sped up all kinds, like you pilot knew he was short. And then just boom, the back end just hits and flies up in the air and everybody's head goes up to the ceiling. And then it just kind of uh, drifts for a little bit, probably a good 300 yards, then tips over, fire starts, everybody's, you know, pushing the doors out. And then once we're on the ground, everybody was all huddled on one side. Uh, my family and I went to this other side, and like 20 minutes later, this lady just appears from like 500 yards away, just like crippled, just walking and yelling. So we start running over, and there's like another five bodies that were like 500 yards away that nobody saw. And so we we're running over there calling the ambulance and stuff. The ambulances took like 20, 30 minutes to get there. It's pretty ridiculous. Like we we're just yelling at people, yelling at firefighters, get over here, get over here. And they're just lagging hard, and now we're just sitting out the airport for four hours, just doing nothing. So, I don't know, we're not very impressed with the whole protocol and systems that have in place for this type of thing. Elliot, where were you sitting on the plane? We were really fortunate. We were uh, central, so I have a family of four, um, my girlfriend, her sister, and two other of my martial arts students. And we are all pretty central, so the back end got knocked off right on that uh, landing and so as flight attendants that were out um, on the tarmac, uh, you know, were way in the back because they were sitting in the back, back end, got hammered because um, we landed short, and then they all fell out, and it was just the most terrible thing I've seen, you know. And so we are just yelling for people, and no one was coming for days. It was bad. So, so uh, just to get it straight, you were sitting in coach near the back of the plane? Is that what you were saying? We were sitting in the middle, yeah. No, we were... We were Super happy. We're all together in the middle, and then you know, once it all happened, we just hold on to each other, and then uh, doors open, and everyone was pushing, rushing out. So the middle was pretty safe. And, and so, and so, what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, you, the, the plane stops. Part of it, part of it is no longer there. I take it. And and what what do yeah. they tell you to do? They say just get out of your seat. You were I mean, you were fastened in your seatbelt. Get out of no, your seatbelt no. and try to get out the down the chutes. Is that what you tried to do? That's what just everyone was doing. The first announcement was everyone stay calm, but we were like, what? We're, and everyone was leaving, so just buckled up and or buckled out and just rushed out the doors. So there wasn't any slides or anything. We didn't have a slide. We just jumped off. The slides weren't off. even, right? You just jumped out of the emergency, the, the doors that were just opened up, and you just jumped out as quickly as you can. Did yeah. you see a lot of people yeah, in, Did you see a lot of people injured? Yeah, there's, I would say probably like, 50 to 75 people that were kind of like on structures and having neck braces and stuff. There's five that we saw was just terrible, just like, you know, bad, bad news. And th those are the flight attendants that got dropped out the back. The back got the worst of it. And that's what opened up, I think, like right where the flight attendants sit. And they, you know, got put out right, right on impact there. And then we kind of fishtailed for another like 300 yards just slide and then it finally rolled over fire started and that's when everyone that all the passengers jumped out but then there's nobody where the flight attendants got dropped off at the very beginning there's nobody over there no emergency no nothing for the longest time was, I, yeah it took a while I, I take it for the folks uh, the emergency personnel to get to the plane uh, is that that's what i hear you saying but uh but it, it looks, I mean, it, the, the pictures are terrible of this plane. It looks awful, and we're showing our viewers these pictures. But from what I hear you saying, most of the people, at, at least your impression is, most of the people did manage to escape? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the plane looks really bad now because it was on fire for like an hour, you know. But everyone, I, I'm not aware of anyone that was stuck. Uh, everybody, yeah, there are a few hundred people that were out and, I'd say probably a good 150 that are totally okay. We're totally okay. Um, you know, and then probably a good handful, 75 or so, that were, you know, my, minor injuries. But, yeah, the plane was just on fire for days, so it wasn't instantaneous like that, you know.
And Elliot, I, I take it you were there in Seoul, uh, South Korea uh, as part of a martial arts program. Uh, what were you doing there? Yeah, that's right. Uh, my master is from Korea. He's a HCB black belt master, Sang Eun Jin. And uh, so there's about 10 of us from Santa Cruz, California that traveled there um, to do a testing tournament. Um, I don't know what it was, but a tournament over there. And did a lot of scoring, and then, you know, I was happy to be home or 10 seconds away from landing and being home, and then boom. Has, has anyone from the airline been in touch with all of you? What have they told you? They, oh, it's, it's pretty bad in here. I feel like I could run this place better than what they're doing. They don't tell us anything. My dad's talking to FBI right now because they keep saying, oh, FBI is here. We can't leave. We can't leave. FBI is here. Well, like, well how the FBI come talk to us? We want to go, you know? So, Asian Airlines not saying anything. All the police here aren't saying anything. They're just, oh, be patient, wait, wait. So, we've been here for four hours doing nothing.